Now another thing is, if you do not accept the Holy Spirit, if you do not ask the Holy Spirit to come and live in you, be baptized and filled with the Holy Spirit, you can't pray. You can, you can say words and you can pray, but they're not going to get very far. You see, when you have the Holy Spirit in you, the Holy Spirit is God's voice. You can pray in the heaven's language. You can pray God's perfect will. The Holy Spirit prays through you weaknesses that, that, that you have. And he, the Holy Spirit searches God's heart for what He has planned and in store for you. And prays them through us in language that our head and our thought process doesn't get in the way. We aren't trying to solve a problem. But the Holy Spirit is solving the problem. That's eight, Romans 8.27 and Ephesians 6.18. Um, we can we worship through the Holy Spirit, John four twenty four and Philippians uh, three three. The Word of God says that those who worship God must worship Him in spirit and in truth. Well, how do you worship Him in spirit? You sing the in the Holy Spirit. You pray in the Holy Spirit. You speak that. Okay, we're rapture ready. Are you? Do you know Jesus is coming back for you? Well. The Holy Spirit is what quickens our body, makes our body alive. The Holy Spirit is what gives us resurrection power, what changes us at the rapture. Uh, that scripture is Romans 8, 11. And the Holy Spirit gives us power. Now, 1 Corinthians 2, 24 is, My speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and power. So, we really cannot witness effectively without the Holy Spirit. We can go around and say, God will do this and God will do this. But if we don't have the Holy Spirit in our power, the Holy Spirit power in our life, then we can't witness the way the disciples witnessed, the way uh, the 12 disciples witnessed, the way uh, the Acts, all the apostles in Acts witnessed. And they witnessed by saying the kingdom of God is here. The kingdom of God is God's domain, God's rule. God's authority living inside of us, uh, causing God's will to be on earth as it is in heaven. And when we lay hands on the sick, they'll he they're healed, demons are cast out, lepers are cleansed, and we speak in new tongues, and if we drink anything deadly, it will not hurt us because the Holy Spirit is living in us. And that is how we witness. We can witness by giving away clothing and then doing other things, but the way we witness that somebody who is a good person in the world can't witness is by healing the sick, cleansing the lepers, casting out demons, signs, wonders, and miracles. And I'm not saying there's nothing wrong with those other ways, but the way Jesus witness is by telling them the kingdom came to them and healing the sick and taking care of their problems. Uh, we are made righteous, 1 Corinthians 6.11, washed and sanctified and justified in the name of Jesus by the Spirit of God. And 2 Corinthians 7, 3.17 says, Now, where the Lord is, there is liberty, there is freedom. Now remember, the Old Testament was laws. You had to follow these laws. And if you broke these laws, you had to kill an animal and sacrifice its blood to cover up your sin. The New Testament is the new will and the new covenant. Jesus became our sacrificial lamb for our sins. He shed, he died, he took all sicknesses, all diseases, all poverty, lack, fear, death, took it all on the cross, all the curse on the cross, and went up to heaven, sprinkled his blood on the mercy seat up there for our sins, not to cover our sins, but to take them away, to make us righteous and right standing with him. And then he sent back the Holy Spirit to live inside of us. <clears throat> and then, because the Holy Spirit lives inside of us, we live under grace, not the law. We don't follow a set of rules. We follow Jesus Christ. And the Holy Spirit convicts us and shows us where we're messing up and where we're wrong. And he shows us through the Word, uh, the Word of God. There's certain things that uh, keep sin out of our life that make us stronger, that make us create us more in the image of God. And the more we fall in love with Jesus, the more we'll follow those guidelines, the more we'll have the dirt. Uh, it's like a garden hose with dirt in it. The more you fall in love with Jesus and the more you follow the things he says to follow, the more dirt gets unclogged out of your hose. And the more you hear God's direction, the more power and presence you walk in because you're not clogging up the com communication. Galatians 5.18 says, Do not be drunk with wine, which is excess, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. So when you are filled with the Holy Spirit, you are overflowing. It's like being drunk sometimes. 
it's like you see everything in the world is a copy of what um, the Holy Spirit, the Kingdom of God is. The Kingdom of God is you get filled with the Holy Spirit like you're drunk uh, with excess, but the world copies it with drugs and alcohol. We have the real deal. We have the real drunk, the real high. The world copies us. How did they? How did they know they were filled with the Holy Spirit? If you take an Acts, uh, a look at Acts um, two thirteen, Acts two thirty three, the promise of the Holy Spirit, uh, He poured out, which you now see and hear, and they were speaking in tongues. In tongues, speaking in tongues is one way to know that you are filled, baptized, overflowing with the Holy Spirit. Acts ten forty four says, while Peter was still speaking, the Holy Spirit fell, for they heard them speaking in tongues and magnifying God. Okay. The Holy Spirit is, when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you have power. And what is that power for? That power is for healing the sick, cleansing the lepers, raising the dead, casting out demons. Now, if you're not doing those things, and if you're not talking in tongues, I question whether you are filled with the Holy Spirit. Now, you want to get filled because the sign of you being filled with the Holy Spirit is having power. And when you have power, you become God's witness. You carry resurrection power within you. You can heal the sick, cleanse the leopards, raise the dead, and cast out demons, and it is for you today. Um, the Holy Spirit, let's see, uh, Luke 61, I mean Isaiah 61 and Luke 4, 18 talks about the Holy Spirit was on Jesus. You see, Jesus needed the Holy Spirit. You need the Holy Spirit. Jesus was fully man, but he came just like a man put aside all of his godly attributes. And he was filled with the Holy Spirit and power. He didn't do anything in his ministry until the Holy Spirit empowered him. And when he went to heaven, he sent the Holy Spirit back to us and told us to wait till we got the Holy Spirit. We don't longer have to wait. We just have to ask and we receive. Matthew 12, 18 says that he would pour his Holy Spirit upon Jesus and Jesus will declare justice. We are to declare justice. Declaring justice means that Jesus paid for all of our sins. And now when we ask him into our heart, it's just as if we have never sinned. So sickness, disease, poverty, lack, and fear have no right, no authority, and no dominion to come into our life. Because if sin never came into the world, then all those things, the cursor and the curse would not come into the earth. So because Jesus died for us, redeemed us from the curse, Galatians 3.13, we are no longer under the curse. It's in the world, and it will get us if we are not filled with the Holy Spirit and know our power, authority, and dominion and resist it with faith. Okay, so um, we need to be filled and baptized with the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> we need the Holy Spirit in us. Now, 2 Corinthians 6.1 says that we are fellow workers with God. Okay, we are God's hands, we are God's body. He lives in us. We are one. He's the head, we're the body. Okay, and Jesus is the same. He does the same thing through us that he did when he had his physical body on the earth, but now he's living in us, his kids, doing the same signs, wonders, and miracles. Um, and then let's take a look. If you have your Bible, take a look at Mark. I know I go through these pretty fast, but let's take a look at Mark 16, 17. And that's probably where we'll stop today because I usually like to keep these clips to about 10 minutes. Uh, Mark 16, 17, very, very important scripture. Okay. It says, he said to his disciples, go into all the world and preach the gospel. And he who is baptized and believes will be saved. He who believes and baptized will be saved. And he who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will follow those who believe. Okay, these signs only follow those who believe. If you are not filled with the Holy Spirit and you do not believe, don't worry about it. You won't have these signs following you. It says these signs will follow those who believe. Okay, I'm a believer. You could be a believer too. These signs will follow you. All you have to do is believe. In Jesus' name, they will cast out demons, speak with new tongues. That means we're speaking in tongues. So you see, tongues is not a controversial, controversial issue. Okay, it says right here that those who believe will speak in tongues. Well, if you don't speak in tongues, then you don't believe. 